All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image in Blender. Um, not exactly a step-by-step, -step, just a, a brief overview of what I did. So the first thing that I did when doing this image is find a reference point. And I drive down this road quite a lot. It's in the UK um, between Manchester and Sheffield. And it's called Snake Pass. And there's this bend, I think it's here, like just, just here, I think. Yeah, so there's this sort of curve, um, which goes around this mountain and you have this lake on the side. And when I was driving down, I just thought how cool it looked and just how ba badass would it be if I made a shot here and I had all the rain and just yeah just it would just be cool having a mercedes gtr just flying down this road so i basically just took loads of pictures of this google um google maps and just got references and as well as that when i when i initially started i basically traced this road and i also got a measure distance so if you right click you can actually get the distance of the road. So that's pretty handy to keep everything in scale. Um, one thing I just strongly recommend is making sure you have everything uh, to scale in your scenes. It just, it's a headache if it isn't. Like you make a tree and it's suddenly smaller than your car. It just doesn't make sense. So that's pretty much what I did for reference. It was basically a complete mimic of this road. So if I just jump into my blender file it is quite a messy file i did this quite a while ago as well so i might not remember everything that i did but here's the general um sort of setup so i've just got a small stretch of road um i obviously don't need that big of a road because it's just a small shot and i tried to optimize it as much as possible because this was actually on my old computer where I was using a 3060 Ti. So I only had eight gigs of uh, RAM, which even on my 4090 now, it still annoys the scene. Well, it annoys this GPU. So a lot of these assets um, are instanced. So if you don't know what an instance are, it isn't just Shift D duplicating, making a separate object. It's actually Alt D. And then it, it completely mimics everything that you do to this one. So if I scale this now, it will scale the exact same. And that basically means that Blender doesn't have to calculate the location of an object um, and like different geometry differences. So it just makes your scene a lot easier to handle. Obviously, it still takes a while to render because you've got all the geometry, but you're allowed way more objects in your scene. So if you're doing like stuff with forests, trees, instances are your best friend. So this road is a polygon texture, I believe. And it's got quite a lot of subdivisions, but you see I've only got subdivisions where the car was um, and that's for the displacement. And I also did sort of a rain pass and this rain pass is using a displacement texture as a map. Um, it's a bit complicated, but essentially it just uses the, the displacement value and then crunches it so that it changes where parts are glossy. And then I've got these painted lines, which is literally just an image texture. And then that's been plugged into an alpha, which basically makes the black parts um, invisible. So instead of making a geometry for all these lines it's just a, a nice simple way to get lines and i tried to be sort of very um like specific on everything that i added so like all these cat eyes um i added just to make sure that you'd at least get some sort of motion blur of an object in the middle and then i added these bollards i think these are from mega scans i can't remember at all a lot of um, the objects in here are from mega scans though. So all these uh, brick walls, these concrete slabs and like these rocks and stuff, all from mega scans. 
So that's just a pretty simple metal with sort of rust grunge materials. But again, it's all getting blurred anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then on the side here, I've got just some dirt. So from camera, when this when this gets blurred, you can see all the mud um, that, um, that sort of piles up on the side of the road. And I only thought to put that in um, the shot because of uh, the references that I saw on Google Maps. So it really pays off to constantly be looking at your uh, references. This is a very similar thing like these lines. It's just an image texture with an alpha um, applied, which let me just show you if I go and rendered view. It just renders out completely flat. And that's quite an easy way, especially um, if you're trying to save memory. It's all a bit of like the same stuff. Like I've got one over here. Um, and then I've obviously got these concrete pillars. So with these concrete pillars, I believe I did um, like an individual material per uh, concrete like um, curb so that I could get different rain splodges on each one because it's a very wet scene. So I wanted like some shininess to shine through, but I didn't want it to be consistent with every single um, other one. And then I've got these sort of dirt mounds which I've chopped off only the part that I needed just to, again to save rendering time and then another brick wall now it doesn't look very impressive right now but I did so many geoscatters which I'll get into but geoscatter is an amazing uh, add-on it's quite expensive but it's just un it's unbelievable so I'll show you that in a separate scene all right so let's start with the car so this is the car and it's not using my new car paint material that I've made, which I use in all my new shots, but it still does the job. Um, so it's essentially a car paint material with a sort of water dirt grunge plugged into the roughness and just a noise texture plugged into the normal for that sort of orange peel like bump effect on the car paint. And then I've got that plugged into a raindrops image, which you can see very faintly here which does that and then i've literally just mixed that so there's no factor it's just straight on top and then with this one this is my texture paint so i actually went in um used loads of image textures and painted this all on myself um same for the the registration plate so if i add this on you can see these are all hand painted by me and this was just looking at so much reference again. I'd be sort of driving home and just looking at how dirty cars and like where it like sort of started and what would occur sort of thing. I also added some like dirt up here where the wheel would spray out and such. And that's basically what I did here. Same exact thing, just a bit more. And that was a lot of work too, because it kept crashing and um, it was also the first time I tried texture painting, so I did it all, probably spent like an hour. But when you texture paint, you actually need to go up into the top left and press image save. And I didn't, so when I opened up the render again, it was just completely blank. And uh, I was ready to give up, but I didn't. Uh, next thing, these flames. So these flames are part of a add-on. I'll put the link in the description. I think it's quite cheap. I think it's called lazy vfx or something like that and it's essentially just uh i think it's like a geometry node thing and it, it just uses loads of images and it just fires them out as an animation so that was really handy and i also plugged in some emission lights just to light up these exhausts uh the carbon fiber is just a basic carbon fiber um and the lights yeah so with these lights, I knew that they were looking quite fake um, straight away. And when I compared them to references, it just um, it just occurred to me that these uh, weren't modelled right. I'm not sure where I got this model from. I think it might have been a free model from somewhere. But the geometry just isn't good enough to make it look real. So in my head, I was already planning on just completely replacing this with a, um, a photo. 
that's pretty much the car. The wheels are from Turbo Squid. These are really high quality uh, wheels. Probably didn't need high quality, like this high quality, because <laughs> they're getting blurred anyway. But um, I really like my details, so that's probably why I did that. So the next thing is probably all the rain effects I did. So there's quite a few. And again, because I use this on, I made this on my other computer. Um, these files are now gone, but this is essentially rain on uh, rain on a black backdrop. And then I'm literally just screening it um, over my 3D scene. Sort of what you do in compositing in like Fusion or Nuke. Um, it's pretty simple and it saves you a lot of render time. But in the end, I actually just ended up actually simulating my own rain. So I might press, I'll press play. Yeah, there you go. So in the end, I actually started simulating my own rain just so I get the, the trails and the motion blur. So I probably didn't need these to be honest. So I'm just going to turn these off. As well as that, I used uh, these things, which are just rain splashes on the floor. Oh, we can also see what's happening in these as well. And then as well as that, I've got these, uh, I think they're, they're pretty much the same as the exhaust. Um, so these are using image textures as well, just for some smoke. And it just makes the, the shot a little bit dirty back here. A lot of stuff going on, I know. Um, it's kind of hard to go about this shot in sort of order, just because it's chaos. But maybe in the future, I'll just do one start to finish and uh, people can follow along a little bit better. Now, if you're comparing this to the like the final image, you're probably wondering, well, where, where are all the water splashes? And uh, they were all done in Photoshop. So I'll take you into Photoshop later and you can see how I retouched all that. So these are the trees. I'm not sure where I got these from again. Um, if I find out where I got them from, I'll leave a link below. But these are just quite simple. And I think they really just make the shot because it, it really looks like you're going down a country lane. So not even on a plane, they literally just float in just so I could try render it on my old graphics card. And then we've got the the fog. So I've got different layers of fog sort of rising in thickness. I wanted to make it look like sort of rain was pooling at the at the top or something. Or I don't know, maybe like cond condensation or like when you drive through a road and it, it's very wet, you normally see sort of foggy haziness in the trees. So that's sort of what I was going for. And then, yeah, all that's left is the geoscatter. So I'll try to turn it on. So these are the stuff that I've manually scattered just myself. Uh, these plants here. Or if I go into geoscatter, geoscatter, and then I'll click on. Right, here's an example. So this is basically geoscatter, this add on here. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, the control of everything is really cool. So you can manual scatter, you can quick scatter, but you can actually biome scatter. So it will just do everything for you. And it's unreal, it's really quick, and you can disable it to the viewport as well. And that's what I did for all the moss here. And I'll show up the final image so you can just compare. Um, and I also did it for the grass. Um, I can just give a quick demonstration of a uh, geoscatter actually all right so here i am in a new file so i'm just gonna add a plane and scale that up and go to geoscatter which is here select an emitter go biome open biomes and let's do let's do this one and you can just see the control and just the realism of everything so like that is a forest floor. Um, it just it works so well, so quick. It's just unbelievable. Um, but as well as that, you can manual scatter. So if you bring in an asset, so for example, let's just add in a cube. And then let's make that a different color so that we can see what we're doing. We can scatter a viewport object. So whatever you've got selected, you can click scatter. Then just start scattering. Press enter to save that. And then exit. Um, 
and then you have all these controls after the fact so you can random rotation you can mirror stuff you can change the randomness scale you can change the actual scale so do like 0 0.2 you can even use image mass to change it it's just a whole system which is unreal like you can even animate it so i'll probably do a video deep diving into geoscatter just to how you get like the best results how you can control it organize it all that sort of stuff but it's defo an add-on that i recommend and this isn't sponsored or anything so that's pretty much everything there is um i guess i can show you sort of the draft stage um that it took me um to get to the stage that i am now so if i go here these are all my test renders that I did up until the final test render. So you can see here, and they're all like different resolutions because of my old computer. So initially, I was thinking that I was just going to create a HDRI at the place, but this just, um, this just didn't do it for me. I thought it was too empty, the focus wasn't on the car, um, so I sort of scrapped that idea. But you can see these are my initial tests. And these are what the, the rain cards are doing. You can see all the tests that I did before I even added the rain on the car. And then you can see I've added rain on the car, I've added trees. I was testing out different levels of fog, testing out the flames. And then these are the, that smoke emitter. It's the same thing, but I just turned the material white just so it looked like I was getting some water spray. And then this was an initial test I was doing for some water spray, but it was just taking too long to render. Um, I just didn't see the point. All right, so now we're in Photoshop and you can see we've got all my layers here. I think there's uh, quite a few. 138, so it's not my, my biggest file, um, but it's definitely quite a big Photoshop file and if i just turn it off you can see this is the initial render that i got so you can see the flames that i got you can see the rain um splashes and that rain system with all them balls you can see this is what's happening with that so they're actually getting stretched by the motion blur and i just think that gives a real sense of speed um especially like over here sort of like over here um you can see the, the lights look trash, but um, I changed them in post, so you can see that. And it loads. There you go. So much better lights. Um, I can't remember where I found them. I think I just Googled it and uh, took the photo. Um, the car paint isn't as good as uh, I wanted it to be, um, but I think this was like my third car image ever in Blender. So it's all about pro progression and just figuring out your mistakes and such. Um, but you can see all that uh, moss that I added in Geoscatter as well as all these plants and then all these trees as well and this is a, a 7k image I believe or 9k 9k image so it's quite quite a big one so yeah I'll just uh, jump in to showing you how I did everything so this base file is just to sort of get everything where I want it to be within the, the render so First thing first was that this wheel didn't look great, so I brought that up, balanced out these, balanced out some of the trees, added some more contrast. These were a bit too bright, so I darkened them. Um, just getting sort of a nice balanced image. Um, I then changed the brake light, and I did that just by, let's see, yeah, so I just added a water pass over it and then just screen that on top so it looks like it's part of the image but when in reality it's not and I, I just really warped this car image into place and I think I did use like some of my own image back here so that's the brake light quite simple um, but I think that brake light really sells this shot compared to that horrible one um set tweaks so this is just getting the color right i was umming and ahhing where, whether i wanted it to be sort of an autumnal shot or like a summer wet summer day shot so i think this is sort of like an in between and then car cleanup this is uh making everything pop 
getting it separated from the background um, getting all the nice edges like here all the forms of the car getting them really popping and then like, getting rid of errors like that so the flames actually coming through the exhaust so um, not a lot like in here we can do it one by one so So darkening that back windshield, well not windshield but back back window, just brightening parts, adding contrast where it needs to be and that's it. Uh, particles, so I think this is just, yeah, so this is sort of like a dirt sort of overlay, making it look like it's spraying some sort of dirt from the road. And then this is the water pass. Uh, which I'm sure people are interested in. There's just uh, a whole lot, so we'll turn them on one by one um, And we can see what I'm doing. So this is the back left water um, Again, just a whole bunch of overlays So I just found these on uh, online and I actually did some in uh, mid journey um, Just so I could overlay some splashes. I was tempted to take my car into like a car park and shoot some images um, at night with like a flash behind it but luckily I managed to find all the ones that I needed so like that's for like wrapping up I try, I try to really envision the wheel spinning and then how that would flick up and then brightening some parts darkening some parts so that it all sat right because these are all completely like different images until it got me a nice result. I think this bit probably could do some work. I don't know why that would be more concentrated than this area, but it looks good either way. Um, and then on top of that, I did a dirt map, and I do this quite a lot. Um, I just overlay dirt maps in Photoshop so that I have a bit more control. So you can see it all here. It's sort of like pulling on that edge, which I think really adds realism. Like if you're all the way back here, it just adds so much. It doesn't all look just flat and clean. It really helps the shot. And then this is my lighting pass. So again, getting that fog in the trees and then vignette making the car stand out from the background. Turn these on one by one. And then again, just making the nice highlights pop. And then I added my overlays. So it's like uh, the car's actually spraying dirt at the lens, which I find always helps. I would recommend not doing it the way I did. So I've just screened it, but I've recently found that you should actually just merge the whole image, blur it, and then multiply that on top of your um, lens dirt, and then screen that. And then you've got like the green, like the right color, so it doesn't look like it's just a gray image. You actually get a bit of green in there, or like whatever color would be behind it, so it would look a bit better. And also, this would only really interact with the brightest parts of the image, not the darkest parts, but maybe it might be different for rain. Um, I'm not sure. And then we've got a smoke pass, which is just adding a little bit of literally just a white brush. Just painting sort of smoke passes and then the final tweak so again I probably just uh, added a bit of dirt here to get a bit more contrast and then just tied it up everything so I went from this to that which is a pretty big change well I think the initial 3d is pretty much there it just needed all the particles and the sort of sim simulations which really help it uh, sell the image so yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's not exactly a step-by-step, -step, but I think there's too many things to like have a short video of a step-by-step -step for this. But maybe in the future I, I can do um, a step-by-step -step or a more detailed um, sort of walkthrough. But let me know in the comments if you uh, want that. And yeah, uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, um, subscribe if you're not already. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.